Assist Man, and yes, I'm coming back at you guys with another Neverwinter YouTube video. Inside of this video, man, I'm going to give you guys my Mod 17 Control Wizard build. If any of you guys watched my Mod 16 Control Wizard build, I'm sure a lot of you guys did, because the video has like 30,000 views on it. A lot of you guys love that build. A lot of you guys love the playstyle, but unfortunately, in Mod 17, as some of you guys might have already figured out or know, they completely nerfed that build. They completely nerfed pretty much the entire Thaumalturge, or however you say that, Thaum tree. And if you're still using my Mod 16 build from uh, the Mod 16, yeah, don't use it anymore, because it sucks. It completely does nothing now in Mod 17. But, don't worry, I do have something. I do have a build that's going to mop and drop the enemies like usual. So if you guys do enjoy this video, man, take a moment right now. Do not forget to hit that thumbs up like button. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well and check out my other videos. So without further ado, man, let's go ahead and get into it. I don't want to go ahead and make this an extremely, extremely long video. I want to talk about everything in depth and also give the basics of it, and so on and so forth. Now, if you guys remember my build from Mod 16, it was all in the Thom uh, the thom tree. I don't even know how you say that word. Well, let's just say it was in the Thom tree. And like I said, man, in Mod 17, they nerfed it completely. They nerfed Ray of Frost. They nerfed Critical Conflagration. It pretty much is terrible now. But the good thing is, is that they did finally make some changes to the Arcanist, uh, or you could call it the Arcanist, however you want to say it, that tree. And inside of this video, I'm going to give you guys a solid, really, really good AoE and single target build to use. Now, like I always say in all my build videos, this is what I am using as somebody who's played the game since day one pretty much on Xbox, somebody who mains a control wizard, somebody who pretty much has everything in the game. This is what I am using. This is what I think is best to use. It is completely up to you if you want to use it or not and I'd recommend anybody ever using any build to test things out for yourself to make sure that you like it and it fits your play style but in my opinion this is the best stuff to be using and the best things to be using for the control wizard right now on mod 17 I do a lot of damage with this still and uh yeah let's go ahead and just go through the basics of things there was some changes there was probably a lot of changes actually from the mod 16 version of the build so let's start with the character sheet. First thing I want to talk about is stats. Before that, let's talk about race. I'm not going to go over races too much. You know, races is kind of like a personal thing. It's a preference, you know? It, go with whatever you think looks the coolest. It's not going to make a big difference. If you want the best race to use in Neverwinter, it is going to be the Dragonborn. The Dragonborn is going to be better than them all because it's going to give you more damage and no other race is going to do that. So if you want the best race, go Dragonborn. Now, as far as your stats go, like where you put your points, you want to try to invest as many points as possible into intelligence and dexterity. And last mod, I was investing a little bit more into Charisma, and this time I took it towards Dexterity. Intelligence is going to give us Control Bonus, which is not that much of an importance, but the Magical Damage Boost is. That's going to go ahead and basically boost our damage. And then Dexterity is not only going to improve our Critical Severity, which is important, but it's also going to improve our Movement Speed. Now, Charisma is also another good thing you can go into, but it's going to give you Recharge Speed and Companion Influence. I'd rather have a little bit more in Dexterity to get a, you know, a little bit more more critical severity, which is going to, in terms, give you a little bit more damage and have a little bit more movement speed. So for me, it was intelligence first, dexterity second. Now, let's go ahead and talk about gear. Now, most of the gear, in, in I, I feel that is going to be best to use for the Control Wizard in Mod 17, I do not have. Because pretty much most of it, you can only get once you complete, like, this, you know, this new Mod 17 thing and start unlocking all the new stuff, the new dungeon or the new trial or whatever to get the new gear. So I don't have mostly any of the good gear. But I am going to show you what I feel is going to be the best gear to use for the Control Wizard once you can get it. And it is going to be all the gear that I am going to be using personally. So what you want to do is you want to go to items, you want to go to collections, and you want to scroll down. And we're going to keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. So you get to Zone Rewards Under Mountain, and then you want to scroll over to the right. And you want to go to the Antiquities of the Under Mountain. 
Now, let's talk about the headpiece. The headpiece that I'm going to be using in Mod 17 is this one right here. The Tempter of the Twilight's Hat. It's going to give you tons and tons of different ratings that you will need, and its equip bonus is really good. Executioner's Might. When you kill an enemy, your power increases by 5% for 10 seconds. Has a 30 second cooldown. And it's also going to give you 4,800 power, tons of other useful stats, and most importantly, 19,200 maximum hit points. Now, before I go any further on gear, I do want to let you guys know that I am not going to be using any of the old gear any longer. For a main reason that in Mod 17 for the new trial, the new stat cap that you need to be at, beforehand the stat cap was like 68,000 for critical strike, 68,000 for armor pen, pretty much 68,000 for, every, for everything. Now for the new trial in mod 17, the stat cap you want to be at is 80,000. 80,000 critical strike, 80,000 armor pen, 80,000, you know, whatever. It's going to be exceedingly hard to get to 80,000 while using the old ass gear like the hags rags and the boots of the wield and other things that we were using before it's going to be too hard if they don't give you enough stats so i am going to be using pretty much all of the new gear as well as some of older things well actually no no older things at all i'm actually going to be using pretty much all of the new gear and the reason for that is like i just said it has a much much higher stats on all of the gear you can see that this helmet right here has 19,200 hit points 4,800 power 1,200 defense 800 combined rating 1,200 armor pen 800 accuracy and awareness so i'm going to be picking things that not only have good high stats on them but also have good equip bonuses so these are the pieces of gear that i'm going to be using that i would recommend for you guys to use in mod 17 once you can get them so for the headpiece is going to be the tempter of the twilight's hat for the chest piece it is going to be this right here seer of the stars robes once again lots of good stats but it's equip bonuses butcher's might whenever you damage or heal your target for more than 15 percent of your maximum hp in a single blow you gain one percent power for 10 seconds and it stacks five times you're going to pretty much be doing this all the time. So this is going to be pretty much a constant 5% more power at all times. So definitely going to be using this because once you have 200,000 power, an extra 5% is going to give you like an, an extra 10,000 power. It's going to be quite a lot. As far as the arms go now, the arms I actually have, and I'm going to show you them on my character sheet. I got these arms from one of those key pack things you buy with those star uh, things. I forgot what the hell it's called, but when you buy like a 20 pack of keys, you get like a piece out of there. You could choose four pieces of gear. And even though these are lower item level, I still feel like these are the best to use. They're called the Star Rovers Glo Gloves. And it's equipped bonus is called Serpentine. It says, when you are moving for three seconds, your damage is increased by 1%. This effect stacks up to five times and is removed if you stand still for longer than five seconds. So basically, every single time you're moving, whether you're walking or you're on your mount, every three seconds, you're going to go stack up 1% more damage it's going to stack five times which means after moving for 15 seconds you're going to have a constant five percent more damage and the only way this is going to go off is if you actually stop moving for longer than five seconds we're going to be moving probably 99 percent of the time in this game when you're in dungeons you're constantly moving when you're in trials you're constantly moving when you're just out and about you're constantly moving now i'm just going to go ahead and walk around a little bit and you're going to see on the top left hand side of my screen you see on my toolbar right now that little blue thing with the thing wrapped around it next to the two armor pieces it was at zero then it went to two then it went to three now it's at four and then now it's at five and we can hopefully go to it real fast and it says serpentine times five. Now, look, I was standing still all that time. It never went away. Let's stand still again here. One, two, three, four. Look at that. I, st I stood still for over four seconds and it still didn't go away. Now, one, two, three, four, five. It should go away and it just did. So and then once you start running again, after three seconds, there it goes. You got one stack. And we're about to have two stacks right now. And you can see it stacking up. So as long as you're moving, which you should be doing like most of the time, you know, and a good thing is that, like I said, you could stop for five seconds and it's still going to be up. So if you have to stop, you know, shoot something or if you want to cast, you know, something like this, you go, you know, cast still time, keep going. And look, it's still, it still has not gone away. So it's like a 5% permanent, you know, um, thing you could actually utilize. Now let's go ahead and talk about the feet. 
the feet, you're going to have a choice here, in my opinion. Um, I would either go with these right here, the Seer of the Stargators. Going to give you a lot of stats you need once again. And it's equip bonus is Death Defiers Might. Gain 250 power for each enemy you are engaged in battle with. Max of 15 targets. I'd say on average, you're probably going to be engaged with 4 to 5 enemies on average. So you're probably going to be getting 1,000 power, 1,250 power. It's really not that much. And it's really not going to make a big difference. Um, you're really just going to be using these boots just because they give good stats. And it's equip bonus is at least helpful. Now there is another pair you can get as well that... Um, I don't have, it's called the Gilded Spike Gators, and these pretty much have around the same stats on them. The other ones have a little bit higher stats, but this one has an equip bonus called Brute's Advantage. When you are 25 feet or closer to your target, your combat advantage and accuracy is increased by 1,000. So this is going to pretty much, we're always, mo most, most of the time, going to have, going to be within 25 feet of our target. So this is like pretty much like a 100% uptime of an extra 1,000 combat advantage and accuracy. But like I said, that's not a big number and either is being engaged with five enemies all the time and getting another 1,250 power. I guess the good thing is, is that the other one stacks up to 15 times. So if you were engaged with 10 enemies, you would get 2,500 power, which could theoretically make the Seer's um, boots better, the Seer of the Stars Gators boots better. So I'm probably going to be running these. As far as the shirt and pants to get inside of the new mod. You pretty much want to go to where it says Rings of the Undermountain. I don't know why it's on the rings, but it's at the bottom. And pretty much this is like, you know, your personal preference. You just want to go with any of the item level 1010 shirts and any of the item level 1010 pants. Why I say to go with any of them, you need to figure out which one is right for you in your build for your stats. If you're low on, for instance, critical strike and combat advantage, maybe you want to get this one. If you're low on armor pen and combat advantage, maybe you want to get this one. If you're low on armor pen and accuracy, maybe you want to get this one, so on and so forth. If you're really low on critical strike, this one gives you over 4,000 critical strike, but it doesn't give you any combat advantage. And same exact thing for the pants. If you're low on defense and critical avoidance, maybe you want to wear this one. You know, if you're low on, you know, deflection and awareness, this one. Defense and deflection. Deflection in general. So this is going to all be up to which one of these you want to wear. It's up to you. They're all going to be the same item level. They're all going to have the same combined rating. They're all going to have the same power. And they're all going to have the same max HP. The only thing that's going to be different is they're going to have different stats. Either armor pan accuracy... Critical strike, you know, accuracy, def defense, deflection, you get the whole nine yards. So it's up to you. Just wear one of these. I'm assuming you get these from the new trial once we open it because I have not gotten them yet. Now, as far as the neck and the belt and the artifact set to wear, I do feel that there is a better one. And I feel that the, the new one that came out is actually for control wizards. And I'm going to show you guys it right now. You can't get it yet. Let's go ahead and look at it. It is called the Halabaster's Odds and End Set. It is the Necklace of the Mad Mage for the neck and the Belt of the Mad Mage for the belt. The necklace basically is going to have the same item level and the same stats as any of the item level 980 stuff we currently have in the game right now, like the Wyvern set or the Music Box set or any of the Staff of Flower set or any of that stuff. It's going to have all the same stuff, but the belt is going to have two Intelligence and two Charisma. Which, going back at the beginning of this video, it's really, really good for our class. Intelligence will make us do more damage. Charisma will make us um, have our recharge speed um, be faster. So it's always a good thing to have that. But the set bonus for this set, actually, to me, is pretty good. It's a lot better than all the other ones. You know, all the other ones we had in Mod 16, they all say upon using a daily, which we get a daily back like once every 17 hours, upon using a daily, you gain a little bit more power and damage for like five seconds. That's not that great because like I said, you're not gaining your daily that often. You're getting it once every 17 hours. So it's not like you're going to utilize it that often. Now, if you inspect this, you can see the set bonus of this is called Mad Dash. When you stand still for three seconds, your damage and movement speed is increased by 5%. Now, it doesn't say how long it's for, but I'm assuming it's for like between 5 to 10 seconds. But why this is really good? 
we could pretty much then couple this with the gloves we just got done talking about and either have a constant 10% up, uh, 10% more damage or 5% more damage whether we're standing still or moving. Because if we're using the gloves, we get 5% more damage after 15 seconds stacks and as long as we're moving, it doesn't go away. With Mad Dash, if we stand still for 3 seconds, we get 5% more, more damage. So if you stand still for 3 seconds while you have the 5% buff of the gloves, now you're going to be doing 10% more damage. And if you were to ever like stand still for too long, well now the gloves bonus is off, but now this works. Or if you're moving for too long, well now the gloves bonus works, but this doesn't. So you're gonna, you, by having this set, you're gonna have a 100% uptime of one of these 5% damage bonuses, and you have about a 40% chance from the three to five second mark to get both of them up. Because as long as you stand still for three seconds and not longer than five seconds, Hey, you're going to have both of them up. So I like this a lot. So this is what I'm going to be using once it's available to get in the game is the belt of the Mad Mage and the necklace of the Mad Mage. Now let's talk about rings. For rings, we got to go back down over here to the Undermountain. And we're going to have to go back to the rings of the Undermountain. There's a lot of different ones. A lot of different ones. Lots of different rings. Look at all these new legendary rings. They have these freaking purple rings, blue rings. Obviously, we're going to be focusing on the legendary rings. And which ones do I think are going to be the best ones to use? There is a couple different ones. Actually, there's like a lot of different ones. I mean, if you look at, you know, this thing, look how many rings there are. I mean, there's like freaking like, I don't know, 10 of them or something like that. It's like a lot of rings. They, they definitely did pretty good with the rings in this one, even though all the rings are not that great but anyway let's go ahead and talk about the rings that i'm going to be using and the ones i think are probably the best uh first one is going to be this one here leading ring of the sage it gives you twenty thousand two hundred combat advantage that is insane and his equip bonus is pretty good too tit for tat your at will and encounter powers do three percent more damage but your daily powers do thirty percent less damage has two offensive slots why this is good is we're going to be attacking a lot with our at wills and encounters and we don't get our dailies that often. So who cares if our dailies do 30% less damage when we never get them. On top of that, one of the dailies we're going to be using for our single target doesn't do any damage at all. So this is the way to go for one ring. The other ring that I'm going to be using if I ever get it, is going to be this one here, Gold Plated Ring. It's going to give you 12,120 Armor Pen and 8,080 Critical Strike. This is going to help get me near that cap or at that cap. But also, my encounter powers are going to do 3% more damage. That's really, really good. And it's going to give you 1,010 combined rating for both of these rings, which is amazing. As far as artifacts go, now that's all the gear. Let's talk about artifacts. Artifacts, obviously, you're going to have to use, which, once again, I don't have it, and I will in time when it becomes available. If we're going to be running the new set, we're going to need the new artifact, which isn't available in the game yet. Halister's Blast Scepter. Hit your enemy with an arcane blast, stunning and damaging it for 32,123. That's my number. Your target's damage resistance is lowered by 15%. That's freaking awesome. It's a 15% debuff on the enemy, on the boss. Really, really good. And this is the part that you need for the three-piece set of the necklace and the belt of the Mad Mage. So this is going to be one of the artifacts we're going to be using. After that, it's completely up to you. You're going to want to use any of the new item level 300 artifacts, like I have here, the Trobion's Ring, the Wyvern Venom Coated Knives, the Arcturia's Music Box, or the Staff of Flowers. Reason why you want to use the item level 300 ones is they give you the most stats. So you want to use any of the, you know, obviously I have to swap out one of these ones. I'm probably not going to be using the Wyvern Venom Venom coated knives because I need to put the new artifact in there somewhere in order to get the set bonus. But which ones you swap out and use is up to you. Once again, it's all based on you know what kind of stats you need to round out your character to get to the 80,000 stat cap. So if you need more accuracy, critical strike, and armor pen, maybe you want to use this. And if you don't need, you know, a uh, combat advantage or power, maybe you don't want to use this. It's all up to you, it's dealer's choice. So that is pretty much all the gear. Let's talk about, well, not all the gear. Let's talk about the last thing is the weapon set. Um, a, a lot of you guys know a Mod 17 became a new weapon set in the game. We can't get it yet until we get the new trial. It's under collections. It is called the Lion Heart Set. And it's going to be, if you want to look it in your collections book, it's right here. Lion Heart Set, main hand and off hand. Not going to talk too much about it. It's better. Higher item level, higher damage. As soon as you can get it, get it, use it. Now, as far as... Armor enchantments, weapon enchantments, and just enchantments and runestones in general. Um, 
I'm still using all Radiance in my defensive slots. I am still using all Darks in my utilities. I have rank 15 Darks in all my utility slots. I have rank 15 or this Anniversary Radiant Enchantment that I still cannot upgrade um, in my defensive slots. So all Radiance in your defensive slots, all Radiance in your offensive slots for more power, and all Dark Enchantments in your utility slots for more uh, companion influence. And as you can see, I have rank 15 everything on here. All Radiance for power, all Radiance for HP, all darks for companion influence. Now, as far as armor enchantment and weapon enchantment, nothing has changed for me. I still think that the best armor enchantment to use in the game is the fire burst enchantment. It's just good. It does a lot of damage to enemies and it procs a lot. So, yeah, I use it. Um, if you want to go into more detail on why I use it, go back and check my first Control Wizard Mod 16 build. I still think that it's the best armor enchantment to use in the game, but armor enchantments in this game don't really make that much of a difference at all. So just use whatever you think looks cool and what's best for you. But this definitely not only will protect you a little bit, but it does a lot of damage, and that's why I use it. As far as weapon enchantment, I still use the same exact thing. In the entirety in Mod 16, I never used the Vorpal enchantment. I even have one, and I never use it, because I think the lightning enchantment is better. I have always thought the lightning enchantment is better, and I explained why in my Mod 16 Control Wizard build video, especially for our class. So I'm definitely going to be using the lightning enchantment at all times. I've never have taken out the lightning enchantment, even though I have um, pretty much almost a fully maxed out Vorpal enchantment, or if it's not maxed out by now, it's right here. Um, I just gotta max it out one more time, but I never use it, so there's no reason for me to max it out, because the lightning enchantment, to me, is much better to use. So, that is pretty much all the stats, the race, the gear, um, enchantments, artifacts, so on and so forth. Now let's go ahead and get into the bigger things. Let's go ahead and talk about the powers. And this is going to be the big one where everything changed. We are not going to be using the Thom tree anymore. We are going to be using the Arcanist or the Arcanist tree. Or whatever you want to say it. I'm going to say both because they both sound cool. So let's go ahead and look at the powers at Wills. Now like I said, this is going to be completely up to you which ones you want to use. But to me, this is what is best and this is what is working the best after running with these now for the past week and testing everything out. I'm using Ray of Frost still as my main at will. Even though it got nerfed, it still does a lot of damage, but it really got nerfed for the other build, not for this one. So I'm using Ray of Frost as my main, and then Arcane Bolt as my secondary. As far as my encounters go, this is going to be for the AoE. This is going to be for the AoE build. On the top right corner, it says AoE. So this is for the AoE build, the area of effect build, not the single target build. Encounters, Entangling Force I'm using on RB. I am using Icy Terrain on Y. You don't have to put them, you know, where I'm putting them, but you want to be using them. I'm using Disintegrate, which got a buff in Mod 17. And then I'm using Still Time, which Still Time is still glitched. It's still glitched since Mod 16. So if any devs or anybody that works for Neverwinter, people on the forums have been complaining about this now for six goddamn months, and you still have not fixed it. Still Time does not proc weapon enchantments. It should be procking weapon enchantments like every other encounter in that will, but for some reason, Still Time does not proc your weapon enchantment. So please... Fix still time. Everybody tell Neverwinter to go fix still time for control wizards because it's still bugged. Use it on test dummies. Use it on enemies. It never procs your weapon enchantment. It doesn't. Anyway, that's what we're using. Dailies, I got Maelstrom of Chaos and Oppressive Force. Even though I never really, really use my daily at all when I'm just fighting AoE. And if I was, um, use either one. They're pretty much both good. As far as class features go, one of the ones you're going to have all times is Storm Spell. This is like bread and butter of Control Wizards for like the longest time for years. Shock your target for 100 magnitude 30% of the time on critical attacks. Still does a lot of damage. Even though it's on critical attacks and our crit was nerfed, it still procs a decent amount of times. It should proc more, but it's still better than what we used to have. And as far as another one, Arcane Presence. Arcane Mastery now increases the damage of your cold fire and lightning based attacks by a half a percent per stack and Arcane Presence passively grants you 5% recharge speed. Why this is good? You're going to be getting 5% more recharge speed on all your powers, which is good, but it's also going to make your cold fire and lightning based attacks um, 
it increases the damage of them by a half a percent per stack. So normally Arcane Presence could stack up to five times, which means it's two and a half percent. But we're going to get into why it's more important here in a second. And as far as feats go, Spell Twisting. That's the one I took. I think it's a lot better than Alacrity. So Spell Twisting is where it's at. Take that one. I'm not going to go over all of these. I'm just going to talk about them for a second and show you. Don't take Snap Freeze. Take a Sailing Force. Um, your encounter powers have a 10% chance to basically do double the damage of your next encounter power. So here's the thing about this. I don't see this popping up. I don't see the name popping up of this. So I don't know for sure if this is actually 100% working or working as intended. Because I don't see the symbol pop up and I don't see the name. But some of my encounters hit for a lot harder than other ones after I use them. So I'm assuming that it's working, but I'm not 100% sure. But even if it's not, well, if it's not working, then obviously you want to just use Snap Freeze. But I think that it's working because, like I said, I'm seeing some of my encounters after I use an encounter hit for looks to be like double. So I'm assuming it's working. If any of you guys know if it's working or not, let me know. But because, like I said, I don't see the name popping up or the symbol, but I assume that it is. Next thing, Chaos Magic. Really, really good to take. It's going to give you one of these three things, a 10% chance after using your encounter daily. These seem to proc pretty often, you know, not like constantly, but they're really, really, really good. Gaining 20% of your action points over 5 seconds, 100% cooldown recovery rate for 5 seconds, and 100% increased damage with at wills. Any one of those is really, really good. For the fourth feat, taking Striking Advantage. Dealing combat advantage damage grants you a 20% chance of doing 80 mag 2 lightning damage to your target. You should always be doing combat advantage damage, especially when you're in a group with people. Make sure you position yourself on the opposite side of your, uh, your team, especially your tank. You should always be in combat advantage. It's a given. You're always going to do a ton more damage when you're in combat advantage. So it makes Nightmare Wizardry not worth doing. And last but not least, do not take elemental reinforcement. Yes, it sounds good, but... A step above mastery is better, and they finally fixed it, so it's actually working in this mod. Arcane Mastery can now stack up to 10 times and grants an additional 1% damage per stack and lasts for 10 seconds. This pretty much makes Arcane Mastery a beast. Not only does it increase its duration from 5 seconds to 10 seconds, so you're never, never gonna not have Arcane Mastery stacks. Because, for instance, if it was 5 seconds, if you're not using an Arcane at will, you're gonna have your Arcane Mastery stacks drop off. But now that it's 10 seconds... And for instance, our cooldown time of Disintegrate, which is an arcane power, is 7.3 seconds. We're going to be using that and just adding on one stack every single time. So we're never going to lose our arcane mastery stacks. As well as we're using Entangling Force, which is another arcane power, as well as Steel Time, which is another arcane power. So now you're going to be having it last for 10 seconds. It's going to stack the 10 times, and each stack is going to grant an additional 1% damage. Why this is important? Well, now it's 10% more damage for these 10 stacks, plus the half a percent more damage for everything in general. So now you're getting 5% more damage because 0.5% per stack times 10 is 5%, plus the additional 1% per stack times 10. Now all of your powers are doing 15% more damage. Arcane Mastery now is going to make Cold, Fire, and Lightning do 15% more damage as well as your um, Arcane powers. Now the only Cold, Fire, Lightning-based attack we're using is Icy Terrain. But it's good because it's going to make Icy Terrain do a lot more damage. But I also, from what I've been looking at, seems to me that the Lightning Bolt that comes down from Storm Spell is actually considered as a Lightning Attack, and this Arcane Presence boosts the damage of that Lightning Bolt. Now, I'm not 100% positive on that because it's really hard for me to figure out, but I'm pretty sure that it actually does. And then, like I said, it's also given us, given us a boost to Icy Terrain, which is really good to use for adds as well. So, these are the things I'm using as far as class features go. Arcane Presence and Storm Spell. These are the um, feats that I'm using. Step Above Mastery, Striking Advantage, Chaos Magic, Sailing Force, and Spell Twisting. And these are the encounters I'm using. Now, let's talk about Boons. I'm not going to talk about them at all, because I haven't changed any of them since Mod 16. I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys the sheet. I'm going to leave it up for a second so you guys can see where I have my points. And then those are the ones you want to use. These are going to be the best ones to use for AOE builds for Control Wizard. So you can go ahead and pause the video here, see all the boons, so on and so forth. Let's talk about companions. I switched it up. I'm no longer using an Augment Companion. I am using a Fighter Companion, and the Companion I'm using is called 
Well, it's called Juicy Lucy, named it after my dog, my beautiful pug that passed away about two months ago. But I had it named her before she passed away anyway, and I'm not changing it. But it's Azuna. My companion's name is Azuna, and that's what I'm using. I think she's amazing. I think she does a lot of damage, and that's what I'm using. As far as equipment goes, obviously, you want to be using maxed out bonding rune stones in all your bonding rune stone spots. For the enhancement, I like to use the one potent precision that grants you more critical severity. Now, for your companion gear, we have a bunch of new companion gear in the game. You're going to want to use whatever companion gear that you feel that you need that's going to round out your stats. It's all up to you. Just use any of the new higher item level stuff. As you see, obviously, I don't have any of it yet. I still have all the old stuff. Some of the really old stuff. But uh, yeah, so you want to go ahead and use that. As far as companion bonuses go, this is going to be the same for single target and um, AOE. Um, I only switched out one of these from my Mod 16 build. So I'm still using Offensive Power, Baby Deep Crow's Presence for 8,000 power. I'm still using the Defense Power of the Minstrel for 4,000 power and 2,000 awareness. I'm still using the Offensive Power of the Raptor to get part of the pack for up to 10,000 more power. I'm still using the Offense Power of the Death Slot to get the 10% chance to infect the target with Poison, which works really, really good still. But the one I changed out is I stopped using the Hunting Hawk now because I'm not focusing on at-will damage as much as before, which I was with Critical Conflagration in the Thom Ray of Frost build, and now I am using the Baby Owl Bear's Presence. If you fail to critically hit, you have a 10% chance to do an additional hit for damage equal to 50% of your power. If you fail to critically hit, and if this thing goes off, it hits for around 100,000 damage for me, which is insane. It doesn't happen too often, but it does seem to proc at least one time, at least once on every cast of Icy Terrain, and about 50% of the time on Steel Time. It procs every once in a while on other things like my at wills and stuff, but when it does proc, it's amazing because it's pretty much going to melt anything. So yeah, I'm using the Baby Owl Bear's Presence. Um, all of my companions are pretty much legendary, all the ones I'm using, and all my bolsters are at 15% for all the ones I'm using. You know, my Zuna bolster is at 15% and blah, blah, blah. So yes, I am not using an Augment companion anymore. Yes, I know I'm getting a, le a lot less stats by not using an Augment companion. Yes, I know I'm getting less HP by not using an Augment companion. And that's why it's very, very important for me to actually go ahead and utilize higher end new item level gear that has higher stats on it. But... This Zuna companion is just too good to pass up. She's just that freaking good. I'm sorry. If any of you guys have a Zuna, you probably know why she's so good. She's just freaking amazing. And I'm not going to tell you guys why. I'm just going to tell you guys that she's amazing. Because then I don't want people saying, Oh my God, you're trying to artificially inflate the prices of Zunas. And I'm like, so I, they probably think I own like 50 Zunas. I'm like, dude, look at my items. Look, at, look, 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 look. I have 51 million AD. I don't have anything in my inventory. Look at my bank. Look at my bank. I'm going to show you my freaking bank. <laughs> oh my god. Look, I have nothing in my bank. All gear. That's it. A couple mounts. A couple legendaries that I'm going to be giving away. That's it. Some companion gear. Look at my shared bank. That's what I have. I don't got no Zunas. I have no Zunas. I don't want any Zunas. I've been saying this to you guys for the longest time. I don't try to make things go up in price just so I can buy them all out and make money off them. I don't care. And any of the money I do make, I give back to the community. You guys should know that. So anyway, I'm not going to talk about the Zunas anymore. That's it is. I like the Zuna, and that's what I'm using. As far as mounts go, obviously, use whatever mount you want to travel on. I'm using this butterfly mount. But some of you guys ask me where you get this thing. Um, you get it from the new pack that came out in the uh, store. For a mod 17, it's like 9,000 zen. I think I got it for 7,500 zen because I, um, I I had a coupon, a blue butterfly swarm. It's a lot of money. It's really, if you have a lot of money, you have nothing else to use it on. It looks really, really cool though. And that's the reason why I got it. It basically is a swarm that turns you into a swarm of butterflies. And when you hit the ability, it turns you into a man full of dancing butterflies that does disco. So yeah, it looks really cool. So as far as any mount, you just want to, Get whatever the one is that you like. But now let's talk about mounts in general, though. Let's go over to them. Where the hell are they at? There we go. Combat power for me for AoE. I mean, obviously, if you don't have a legendary mount, you're not going to have a combat power. If you have multiple legendary mounts, you have a choice. If you only have one legendary mount, just use whatever you have. If you have multiple ones, then use something that's going to hit AoE for AoE. And that's why I'm using the Vortex from the Magic Carpet, because it does the best. 
As far as equip power, once again, use what stats you need, but for me, I'm trying to always stack as much power as you can get. I want to try to stack as much power as you can get, because it's going to make you do a lot more damage. So, I'm stacking the Dominant Force for 10,000 power from the Legendary Mount. As far as my stable goes and my insignia bonuses, I this is pretty much the same, but I switched one out. Still, you want to try to use all legendary insignias of either dominance or brutality for more power, but if you need more stats of a specific thing like critical strike and armor pen, this is the area where you want to try to fix it. You want to try to get different insignias then to round out your stat caps on your armor pen, your crit strike, your you know defense, so on and so forth. But if you could you know, get the stats in other places, still try to get as much power as you can in here. Now, I'm still using Oppressor's Reprieve, I'm still using Combatant's Maneuver, still using Barbarian's Revelry, and I'm using Shepherd's Devotion. The main thing that I swapped out is Warlord's Inspiration. I can't even speak. Warlord's Inspiration. Your summoned companion does more damage. Why is that important? Because now we're not using an Augment. Now we're using Juicy Lucy, and she is doing a mopping spree and just demolishing things. So yeah, I want her doing 20% more damage. You should as well. And then that's pretty much about it, man. Um, yeah, Oppressor's Reprieve, Combatant's Maneuver, Warlord's Inspiration, Barbarian's Revelry, Shepherd's Devotion. Those are the mounts. Those are the mount uh, insignia bonuses. Like I said, try to use all insignias of dominance and brutality for the most um, power you can get. And uh, Legendary if you can afford it. Companions, I'm using the Zuna. Equipment, use as much bonding runestones as high as levels as you can. Potent Precision for your enhancement. Best companion gear you can get that has the stats on it you need. Boons, showed you guys already. Pause the screen again. These are the ones I'm using. These are the ones I feel are the best. Powers, these are the ones I'm using. Feats, talked about them all already. Appearance, completely up to you. Whatever the hell you want to look like, you know. Everybody's different gender nowadays. Might as well claim whatever the hell you want. Character, that means nothing. Stats, these are my current stats right now. As you can see, I'm well under the armor pen and defense and critical strike and all the caps until I get all this new gear that I talked about in the video. And once we get that new gear, then we're going to be a lot higher as well. The stat caps are going to be a lot easier to obtain. And gear. Now what I want to go ahead and talk about is the single target build. The single target build, which I think I need to get to a campfire. If there is a campfire that I could switch to. Let me see. Maybe I could just switch. No, I cannot switch to my boss build. Uh, is this a campfire? No, not a campfire. Where is there a campfire? Let me travel to the Undermountain. Let me leave Uprising and go to Uprising. Leave up. What the hell am I doing? I'm leaving Uprising, go going to Uprising. How the hell do I get out of here? Uh, let's go to Stardock. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to show you guys the boss build. Everything on the boss build is exactly the same except for some of the powers, the feats, and the gear. And that's it. Or not even the gear, the artifact. Now I should be able to switch. I think I could switch in here without being at a campfire. Let's see. Yes. Okay, now I'm in my boss build. Which, hold on. Some of my armor has not been saved. I need to uh, apply this item to all loadouts. All right, now let's switch. There we go. All right, so the only thing different on the boss build is we are going to still be using the Soul Sight Crystal artifact as our main artifact so use the soul sight crystal on the boss build because it's going to give you 25 percent more damage from your attacks for 10 seconds when you fight the boss it's a given you should always be using this on boss fights the only other thing that's changed is we're going to go over boons the top boon has changed i don't use deathly rage on the single target build on the boss build i use bloodlust it's much much better to use bloodlust on the single target so all the other boons stay the same, except for that one. Put three points in the Bloodlust instead of three points in the Deathly Rage. And that's all about powers. Everything else pretty much stays the same, except I'm going to be using Repel. You're going to be using all more single target, higher damage powers. You're going to be using Repel, Entangling Force, Rave Enfeeblement on RB, on Spell Mastery, so you're giving that 10% debuff on the boss for you and your teammates. And then Disintegrate. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, you're also going to be using this. Arcane Empowerment. You empower yourself with Arcane Magic, entering a Transcendent. During this time, you cannot gain action points. This does no damage, but it's going to make your encounter powers deal 10% more damage and recharge extremely fast. 
It's going to last for 10 seconds, and it's going to gain you five stacks of Arcane Mastery when you cast it. As far as active abilities, class features, still we're using Storm Spill, but the big one now is we're using Arcane Power Field. This is basically going to double our damage bonus granted by stacks of Arcane Mastery. So instead of them giving us a max of 15% more damage, now it's going to be making us do 30% more damage when we have all 10 stacks, which we should in this build. That's nuts, man. That's nuts. And it's going to last for 8 seconds, and it's going to do a small amount of damage to anybody near you. And we're still using all the same stuff. Step above Mastery. Our Arcane Mastery now stacks up to 10 times, grants more damage. Striking Advantage. Chaos Magic. Assailing Force. Spell Twisting. So, only thing we changed out on this one is we're using this as our daily Arcane Empowerment. We're using, still using Storm Spell. But now we're using Arcane Power Field as well as our class feature to get that double damage. When we, you know, go ahead and use this, now all of our encounter powers are going to be doing 10% more damage, plus the extra 30% more damage from our Arcane stacks, 40% more damage for 10 seconds while you're in this thing, and your powers are recharging, like, instantly. So you're going to be able to get off two rotations of encounters. It's nuts, man. And we're going to be using different encounters, obviously ones that have higher magnitudes to do more damage, like Repel like Entangling Force, like Disintegrate, and Ray of Enfeeblement on tab to not only do damage, but increase the target's damage taken from magical and projectile attacks by 10% for you and all your teammates. Boons stay the same except for the top one I talked about. Companions stay the same. Mounts. The only thing I changed on mounts is I switched out my combat power to Tensor's Transformation to get more power and more strength, dexterity, and constitution for 12 seconds. And that's it. If you don't have multiple combat powers, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you have multiple combat powers, you want to use something that's going to increase your damage for single target, like Tensor's Transformation gives me more power for 12 seconds. So, yeah, that's that. So, that's the boss build. Companions, pretty much everything stays the same, except for we swap out one boon, swap out some class features, dailies, and encounters, and uh, we swap out the Soul Sight Crystal. And that's really the only thing that's changed. Now you can see... If I go back to my character sheet, I'll swap back to my AoE. Everything's still the same. So, that's it, man. I said I didn't want to make this video long, and holy shit and balls, it's 42 goddamn minutes long, and I, I don't even know how I sat here and talked for 42 minutes straight without taking a break and without drinking anything to drink or anything. I don't even know how the hell I did it. But anyway, man, I hope you guys appreciate it. Leave a comment down below, man. Let me know if you use the build, how you like it. And don't forget to share this video with your friends that have Control Wizards and looking for some good ideas on other stuff in the game. And do not forget to hit that thumbs up like, because Lord knows, I spent a lot of time on this damn video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, man. And I hope I gave you guys some good tips and pointers and things you can look forward to. And um, Mod, 6, Mod 17 for those of you guys who are going to be playing it a lot. And so on and so forth. So anyway, YouTube, this is my, my Mod 17 Control Wizard build video. And I went into details about everything. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up, like, subscribe button, share, all that good stuff. Love you guys. Till the next time. YouTube, this is the Assist Man, and I am out.